Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be talking about the messengers Allah sent in Quran. In Surah Yasin or chapter 36, it says Allah sent messengers to a city and then sent a third one to help the first two. But as usual, Allah is very ambiguous, so he did not mention the name of the messengers. He did not mention the name of the third messenger. He did not even mention the name of the city. Either it was a secret or he just forgot. Either way, this passage actually left many Muslims confused because in understanding of verses in Quran, normally they have to go to tafsir or commentators so they can understand Quran. But now the commentators, they have different opinions. So <laughs> this is the problem. Let me take you to the first verses first. Let us read. Coin for them a similitude, the people of the city when those sent came unto them. When we sent unto them twain, they did not them both, so we reinforced them with a third. And they said, Lo, we have been sent unto you. They said, You are more like us. The beneficent hath not revealed. You do not you do but lie. Today I want us to focus on one single verse here in Quran. Chapter 4, chapter 6, verse 14. When we sent unto them twain, they denied them both. So we reinforced them with a third. And they said, Lo, we have been sent unto you. I want us to focus on this. Now, many Muslims, they, they usually follow Ibn Kathir. What Ibn Kathir says, they believe. Because they regard him as a person of the best of the commentators, you know. So his opinion is highly regard, regarded in Muslim world. Ibn Kathir, he actually did not agree with most commentators. Most Muslim commentators will say those messengers were the disciples of Jesus. Or many of them believed that. Ibn Kathir rejected the idea. He only agreed on one thing, the name of the city, Antioch. He believed those messengers were Sadiq, Saduk, and Shalom. I don't know where he got the name from. And now I want you to pay attention to this. He believed when those three messengers went to the city, Antioch, the king was Antiochus, the son of Antiochus, the son of Antiochus. I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to remember the name of the king. Because later on, at the end of the video, I want to show you something almost at the end of the video. So for now, remember the name Antiochus, the son of Antiochus, the son of Antiochus. Like I said, I don't know where he got the name of Saduk, uh, the, the name from Sadik, Saduk, and Shalom. In my opinion, Muslims do not follow what he believes. Because what he believed is unf unfounded. There's no base, actually. Ibn Kathir is someone who was... Nobody knows when he was born, but his death. Take a look at this. In the year 1373, he died 741 years after the death of Muhammad. Imagine that. Seven centuries after Muhammad. Can we trust his opinion? In my, in my opinion, we should not follow. Or we should not trust him. It's not necessary, I uh, mean, like, because, well, it's not necessary because I'm Christian, right? But again, 700 years after the death of Muhammad, Come on. 
This is the problem. Seven centuries. Now, this one is Al Qurtubi. Al Qurtubi is someone who was who died in 1273. So he died, or he was born roughly or around 100 years before Ibn Kathir. Let's take a look what he said. I will start the story from here. Jesus sent messengers to them, and they met an old man, Habib al Najjar. They called him to God and said, We are Jesus' messengers. We invite you to worship God. So he asked them for a miracle, and they said, We heal the sick. And he had a crazy son. And it was said he was sick on the bed. So he wiped it. So he got up. God willing, healthy. So the man believed in God. It was said he was the one who came from the farthest part of the city seeking. So he disclosed their affair. And they cured many patients. So the king sent to them. And he used to worship idols. Asking them for information. And they said we are the messengers of Jesus. He said, what is your sign? They said, we will heal the blind and the leper, and we will heal the sick. God willing, we invite you to worship God alone. The king bid them. Wahab said, the king imprisoned them and flogged them with a hundred lashes. And the news ended up with Jesus. So he said a third. It was said, Shamun al-Safa, the head of the apostle, for their victory. So, I make it short. At the end, the king believed them. But now, I want to show you what is interesting here. Two things are very interesting, are very interesting in this story. The disciples of Jesus also heal the sick, the blind and the leper, just like Jesus, just like what is written in Bible. Very interesting. And now, look at that. They, he did not mention any names until Shamun al-Safa, the head of the apostles. Again, if you are a Protestant, you do not believe this, but if you are Catholic or Orthodox, you believe the head of the apostles at the time was Peter. And Shamun means, means Peter. Al-Safa means the pure. Peter the pure, a.k.a. Simon Peter. Very interesting, right? So, Ibn Kathir, who died in 1373, did not believe those messengers were those messengers were the disciples of Jesus. But Al Qurtubi, who died 100 years earlier, believed those messengers were the disciples of Jesus. Let's go with Tafsir Jalalain. Oh, sorry. Al-Baghawi, Al-Baghawi, Tafsir Al-Baghawi, now, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to read the whole thing, basically, al Qurtubi is very similar to Al-Baghawi, even the story. Habib al Najjar also mentioned yada, the, the companion of Yasin, yada, yada, yada. Jesus sent the two messengers to the people of the city of Antioch. Right? That's what, what it is. So this, uh, this Al Baghawi. When did he leave? Hmm. Now, Bagawi, he died in year 1122, right? He died in year 1122, roughly 100 years before al Qurtubi. So now we have two tafsirs believe that those were the messengers 
of Jesus. Were the disciples of Jesus. Now, Jalalain. However, Jalalain is later on. But I just have to show you. Look at this. On verse 13, and strike for them a similitude the inhabitants of the town Antioch, where the messengers, namely Jesus' disciple, came to it. I do understand Jalalain is much later. His tafsir is completed by Jaladadin Asuyuti in year 1505. But I just want to show you. So many different opinions. But there is one person who lived during the time of Muhammad. That we should take a look what he said in his tafsir. Who was that person? One of the Sahaba, Ibn Abbas. Look at what he, the, the words he used. Two apostles, Simon the Canaanite and Thomas. Very interesting. Let us read. When we sent unto them twain, two apostles, Simon the Canaanite and Thomas, and he denied them both. So we reinforced them with a third. We strengthened them with Simon Peter, who confirmed the message conveyed by the other two apostles. Again, so he believed those messengers were apostles. Like I said, apostles means Rasul in Arabic, which sometimes Muhammad also called Rasul. Now, this is a problem, right? This, he is a Sahabi, one of the companions, one of the Sahaba. He believed the, this verse is talking about the disciples of Jesus who were Rasul. Get it? Muslims, they get headache when they see this. They, they, they will do whatever it takes to refute this. Even, even one of the tafsir I will show you later. Now, but before I go, continue. In case, if you do not know, Simon the Canaanite is not the same as Simon Peter. Simon the Canaanite, well, I will show it from here. Saint Jerome and others mistranslated Simon's title, believing that my, Matthew and Mark referred to him as Simon the Canaanite or Simon the Canaanian. They assumed he was from Cana, a town within Galilee or possibly Canaan. This mistake led to the idea that Simon was presented, presented at the wedding in Cana in John 2, where Jesus performed his first miracle and turned water into wine, and that he was the same person as Simon, the brother of Jesus. Some Bible translation preserve Jerob's mistakes out of respect for tradition, calling Simon the Canaanite. But actually, it's not Simon the Canaanite, it's actually Simon the Zealot. So now, when you see Ibn Abbas call him Simon the Canaanite, it's because I believe it's because probably. He put, just like uh, what the Bible says, well, what the Saint Jerome or other, other people said, right? It's Simon the Canaanite. To differ, to make the differentiate between him and Simon Peter. Now, on verse 18, I just want to add this. Also, on verse 18, again, he used the same word, apostles. I just want to put it up out there. 
So he really believed those were apostles. Now, let's go to Maududi. Maududi is a much later uh, tafsir, but he do support Ibn. He did support Ibn Kathir on the base of the name of the king. Look at this Antiochus. That the problem is he he even he no. Antiochus reign ended in year 65 BC. And he, he also believed this funny. He believed the Acts of Apostle anti New Testament shows that the Christian preachers reached Antioch for the first time a few years after the event of crucifixion. Maududi was right about one thing. Antiochus, the son of Antiochus, the son of Antiochus, his reign ended in 64 BC. So it cannot be Jesus. Because if you follow Antiochus, the son of Antiochus, the son of Antiochus, then the story is about 100 years too early. Jesus was born in about year one. He died in about year 34. Right? So the, the disciples of Jesus was not, they were not even born yet. Jesus was not even born yet. So that's impossible. Who is Al Alam Maududi? He was born in year 1903 in India. He died in the year 1979 in Buffalo, New York. Hmm. So, most commentators believe those were the disciples of Jesus. With exception of Allah Maududi and Ibn Kathir. Now, Before I end this, the, the opinion is yours. Right? I do believe he's talking about the, the disciples of Jesus, if it's my personal opinion. But you may have different opinions. However, I show you everything that needs... Uh, That is uh, related to the story, this uh, verses, all the informations, and you can form your own opinions. If you are Muslim, you can check and double check the sources I gave you. Before I end this video, I want to actually show you the word in Arabic. I want us to go back to Surah 36, verse 14. What is the word? Mursalun. Mursalun. And here, when you click, this is Quran.com, when you click on the word, it shows messengers. But when you take a look, when you take a look at the translation, you do not see the word messengers. Very strange. Hmm. Why? Because the translators hiding it. They can say, we sent unto them two messengers. And then we reinforce them with a third messenger. But no, those words were not used here in the translation but when you click on the arabic word it says mursalun mursalun again mursalun is not rasul yes i do understand but let me show you surah al-hijr 
first verse 57 you see the last the last trans, uh, the translation here oh you messengers let us check what is the word in Arabic. Al-Mursalun. Now they translated right. The messengers. Or messengers. <laughs> Very strange. You see? There's the problem. The tafsirs are problem. The translations are problem. They're hiding so many things. If they don't do it, the clear, uh, the verses are very clear. It's very clear. Jesus or Allah sent the disciples of Jesus. So it means the disciples of Jesus were also messengers. Amen. I hope you do understand what, what uh, the point here in this video. And I hope you don't die of boredom. I hope not. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you for listening and watching. Whether you believe those messengers were disciples of Jesus or not, God bless you all. Have a nice life.